Welcome to JLive. I'm J Arts Executive Director Laura Mandel, and it's great to be with you for JLive. JLive is our series of virtual cultural experiences that bring us together to explore and celebrate the diverse world of Jewish art, culture, and creative expression. We're bringing you bite sized conversations with the best Boston area talent. Today, I'm excited to be with artist Josh Weiner, an artist who specializes in making mosaics with Jewish community organizations and more, and whose work I've admired for many years before I even knew him. You have possibly seen his work around town and he'll show you a little bit, uh, possibly his iconic mural on the side of the SNS Deli, outside the old movie theater on Church Street in Harvard Square, the iconic Rashi mural that's inside the school or on the outside of Epstein Hillel, amongst many, many other really gorgeous works. So I'm excited to be with him today. If you have questions during our conversation, please share them in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, and I'll ask as many of them at the end as time allows. So, welcome, Josh. Go ahead and kick uh, us thanks, off. Thanks, Laura. Thanks very much for inviting me to do this, and I love the series, and I'm so honored to be able to be one of the artist participants. And I think today what I'd like to start with is to <clears throat> show you um, uh, a video of a project I installed just a few days before uh, Temple Shalom and Newton shut down because of the COVID um, closures. Um, so I'm going to do a, a screen share and I am going to get you onto my desktop. And here's a video, everybody. It will show you um, just moments after the mosaic was installed, what it looked like in the new space. And you'll see my, my friend and assistant, Laurie Callis, who is been helping me for many of these projects, including the Rashi School and uh, her own temple, temp Temple Beth Elohim in Wellesley. Um, you'll see her because she worked with me on the project. So here we go. And Laurie and I have just finished this new mosaic, overlapping generations. The circles are all the different ways that people come together and overlap over time. Here are some of the details. Okay, so that is our video, and um, it shows the newest mosaic, but I'd like to give you a bit more of a sense of um, where I'm coming from as an artist, and also um, then we're gonna return um, to this project quite quickly and show you more of it. Um, this PowerPoint just gives you a sense of my, really my background. When I was Starting into making public art, I was a, still an architect working in Cambridge. I was a 30-year-old who loved big walls and loved art and how it came together with architecture. But I was a practicing architect then, and this was my first really big project. It was uh, a competition for a large mural on Newbury Street. Um, and after that, I did many others. Um, this is one um, that is, um, all right, this is the s, &S restaurant. Um, another one, the style is called trompe l'oeil, it means fool the eye, and I did a lot of this while I was still an architect, and this was a popular form in the early 90s, and, and that's fun because it's a Jewish, really truly a Jewish, old style Jewish deli that became a popular restaurant in Inman Square. Oops. I love this one. I've loved this one for years. <laughs> now this one, believe it or not, was in the uh, Hebrew Center for Age in Boston, called part of the Hebrew Senior Life Community. Now it is in my studio because the building was renovated. These were all done on canvas. I took them down, rolled them up, and we're waiting to reinstall them into one of the new Hebrew Senior Life facilities. It shows Jewish Boston in the 1930s when downtown Boston was actually a Jewish community. And uh, there's a lot of story in here, but I won't, we won't talk about it today. Uh, we'll have to do that another day because there's a whole uh, story with the G and G Delhi that relates to other programs we've done. So for another well, day. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the Rashi School. Some of you may have seen this. It's a mosaic I did about 10 years ago. Um, it, and it's in their um, Sukkot Shalom, their shelter of peace. It was a community mosaic. And often 
When we do these, we have people in the community posed for the portraits, like the kids posed for all those portraits. And then we had multi-generational programming where people were able to work together, grandparents and their grandchildren, making this with me. So I'm the designer and then get teams of people together. Same for this one, which we're gonna talk about a little more the materials of how it was made. This is over at Temple Beth Elohim in Wellesley. It's a, it's a triptych, a three-part piece of art. Abstract, but I think most of you can probably see a shofar or a Torah scroll unrolling. It's a whole other long story that we won't tell today. Um, this shows the kinds of workshops that we use to make clay objects that go into the mosaic. So we will be talking more about that soon. And now you can see the, the community working over at, the, in this case, not in a school, but in a temple, in Temple Beth Elohim, about five or six years ago. This is the one that we're gonna focus on a bit more today. It's the new one that I showed in the video. Um, it's called Open Your Eyes, and it's called that because um, my uh, aunt, Anita Weiner, was a member of this congregation, and when she passed, a fund was created at the temple called the Open Your Eyes Fund and Program, uh, hosted by a, um, a, a terrific woman named Susan Epstein. And when the temple decided to renovate, they knew that they wanted a piece of community art to kind of connect the past to the present to the future. So that's what this is about. And I was so thrilled. This is right after we finished the installation. Um, and uh, so you can, so those of you that don't know me on site, that's what I look like when I'm working. Um, this is the new foyer into the building. On the right side, you can see the stained glass windows. They're were really truly inspirational for my project. The mural is in the entrance, in the foyer. The stained glass windows were created by an artist named Napoleon Setti, and they're semi-abstract, very strong colors and patterns, and really beautiful light comes through these. So that was a great inspiration for the project for me. We started with design workshops where we invited the congregation to take mosaic shards and pieces and to tell a little about about uh, the temple, the memories of the temple. And we invited people of all ages, everybody made a small mosaic and, um, and, and wrote a statement about the mosaics and we laid them out on a big table. There were about 50 of them. And this was the way we got our design ideas for starting. Um, and we used the different ideas and integrated them into the overall design. This one shows a nice little detail. It's actually a mother and father with a little girl standing um, on the altar at the temple. Here's the design drawing. This is pretty typical of what my sketches look like. <clears throat> They're quite detailed. They are there to scale and in color, and they show everything. But of course, after that, I have to figure out what materials to use to make it, because the pencil drawing is mostly about the color and the content, but it's not about the fabrication. And Laura and I will talk a little bit more about that soon. This was my concept sketch. I woke up the morning after our design meeting and I had this in my mind. It's a very tiny sketch, but it actually shows all the conceptual ideas for uh, different, uh, uh, how I developed it. So it's interesting that you can, you can come up with this, a thumbnail sketch that can turn into a, such a, a big work of art. The line drawing that was used for the, uh, the actual layout of the mosaic, which is done on panels in the studio. You can see us just starting we outlined everything in mirror. And I think if you remember the video, you probably remember seeing a lot of reflection. So mirror can be great for adding sparkle and glitter and light, but it also has the symbolism of reflecting people and reflecting uh, the world around us. Uh, we invited people from the, the um, temple into my studio for a couple of dozen sessions of work. This, uh, this shows people uh, working for about two hours. I think we had, we had many different groups of people come, so this is a little later on in the process. And you can see my assistant, Laurie, in the background with her, her long black hair. Um, we also use clay tile in this one. You can see the tiles, they're gray in this one at the bottom, but they became glazed and highly colored as we went along. These are the finished tiles. They were, the drawings for these were all made by members of the community. So that was a way that we were able to take people's ideas and add another layer of bringing them back into the, the artwork. Uh, now we're, I'm, we're installing it. I had to build a little knee wall to support the weight of the mosaic and get it to be level in the space. And here we are and our project is done and finished on the wall. We had a formal uh, online Zoom dedication about uh, two weeks ago and we had about 100 people visit us for that. Um, 
and it was really fun to do that. The rabbis blessed the mosaic, the cantors sang. Uh, we talked a lot about past, present, and future of Temple Shalom. And um, that's that, and just one, a few more slides to show you some details. Uh, there's a lot of symbolism here, but I don't think I'll go into much more than to say the pomegranate at the center is the center of the eye. And each of those little beads is a seed that represents one of the Jewish laws. So we have enough to cover the Jewish laws of Torah. I used a lot of stained glass uh, to recall Napoleon Seti's mosaic, uh, sorry, um, uh, stained glass. Uh, you can see it's semi-abstract. You can see a dove that's sort of woven into the background. Um, this could be dancers or it could be a Jewish star. There, these have multiple readings. Uh, if you might not see it the first time, but this is the Torah scroll uh, in blue and gold. And at the bottom, again, more tiles. This is called the Founder's Arch. And um, you can see how we use a lot of mixed materials, which uh, we'll look at again in a minute if we have time with Laura. Uh, pebbles and mosaics and stained glass and tiles. I even see the Temple Shalom logo in there. It's there. <laughs> here you're good, Laura. You know, <laughs> you know your temple here in Boston. Uh, and we were lucky to have um, a family come in and uh, have time to start to, to talk about it and touch it, which will, of course, happen a lot when, when the temple reopens. And just one more slide, just to tell you, you know, I have a whole um, uh, uh, website that shows the work. So if you want to learn more about the, my work, just go to jo Jewish Mosaic Arts. It's a uh, one of different websites I have because I do a lot of different types of work, but all the different projects that I showed you are in there and lots more. So I'm gonna stop the screen share and we, we're done with that. It's <laughs> great. I just have to say, Josh, I am in awe of the detail you can get into these pieces. I feel like the more I look, the more things I find, which is really the case with incredible art like this. But what really amazes me is that you can work with such solid, rigid materials to make such fluid, like fluidity within the pieces. It's kind of incredible. Um, and uh -huh. you spoke already a little bit to how some of the pieces are community made out of clay, how some are out of glass. Can you talk to us a little bit more about the materials? Because I really am just in awe of how you make everything come together. Well, you know, the materials, Laura, are really just different types of things, glass beads like we use for the pomegranate or uh, shards, you know, buckets of shards, tile and so on, things like this. Um, some of it is cut glass like this. And some of it is made by clay. I'll show you a couple of the samples that I use for the Temple Beth Elohim project. You can see we had people in the community make um, a temple or a pomegranate. We have Jacob's Ladder. Those are the elements that people make uh, who are not uh, artists necessarily, but can make simple, beautiful objects. And we, we can then figure out strategies to build around them. This is the Torah, and this is the scroll that you can see here behind me. Um, and another sample board that also shows the kinds of materials we use is here. This is nice because it shows, I have to make these in order to um, actually work with the community because the fact is mm -hmm. uh, the drawing is one thing and the building is another thing. And the buildings, especially with community mosaics, it's something that teams have to be able to do actually very easily. We have a lot of young kids and a lot of non-artists. So again, I had people make the, their own clay objects, but then we, we glazed the tiles, handmade glazed tile. We were able to cut stone. I brought in different types of wet saws and band saws. I taught people how to cut stained glass with a, wow. with a circular band saw. Um, there's often mirror in these, lots of different materials. Um, you are really a master of a lot of different materials. I, I will say this is not so common across artists I find these days. I'm impressed by your diversity of experience uh, here. <laughs> well, you know, it might have a little bit to do with having that inter interface for myself as an architect because architects have to create large buildings out of lots of small, really details of drawings and ideas. So I think that thinking helps me as a muralist and as a, as a, uh, as a mosaic artist working large, I can I integrate a lot of ideas and also a lot of different materials. And I, I find that in these kinds of projects, this um, texture of all the materials coming together can be really just uh, lively and beautiful, very, very, um, very tech, tactile, so if people want to come in and touch things as much as we can, we try to make the, the installation of the murals in a place where people can physically interact with the mosaic to touch it, to see themselves reflected in the 
the mirror and so on. I really love that because I'm the person who goes into a museum and wants to touch everything. <laughs> so I think that is so cool that you've given people an opportunity, not just to help envision these pieces, but to really be a part of them even when they're installed. I think that's just so beautiful. Well, you know, it also keeps it interesting for me. If I, some, the tradition of mosaic art, at least the original traditions was the entire mosaic would be made out of stone or out of glass. And those are absolutely beautiful. Those are traditional mosaics in kind of a Roman style. We'll do large installations just out of glass mosaic. And I've done a few myself, but, but to tell you the truth, when we mix materials, it's so much more interesting to both to, to design it, to make it, and then to look at it and touch it. So yeah, I'm glad you, that you like that. Um, and um, you know, one thing I also brought today is the small sample board just to help people to learn that the mosaic art form is actually very, very easy conceptually. All you have to do is stick things onto a panel with glue. Uh, there's lots of different types of glues and cements. And of course, my work sometimes is outside where the technical issues are much more involved. But for, the, for starters, for someone that might wanna work, they can just take their, their, their dishes that they have at home, things that are, are broken, and you can actually break them with a hammer or just drop them on the floor and get lots of shards. You can go to craft stores like Michael's or any of them and find beads and things like this. Or you could even, if you're working with kids or sometimes when I'm working in, el in elementary schools, you know, the kids will go to these things and they'll use them for necklaces around somebody's face. So the way that you attach these things is you, you can use a white glue. Um, here's just a small sample board. It's nothing fancy. It's a, but it just shows how, how working with children you know, this would be about the level of a younger kid, but you can use like an Elmer's glue or weld bond and stick a little dab on the back of the tile. I'm gonna just finish the, the flower right now very quickly with some little shards of red tile that are kind of like the uh, Torah cover. They're just tile I, I glaze in my kiln. And what you do is you, you take, this one I'm using is, is a kind of a paste that you get at Home Depot. I'll show it to you, but it's called Acropro, it's a super nice paste and it's the one I use with kids because it's completely non-toxic and finger friendly. And you can just take cool. a little dab like this and stick it on the back of your tile. Oops, like that. And squish it down on your, on your flower and all of a sudden that will stay and then you can grout it later. Now I, I use a lot of colored grouts. So we're not gonna really talk about that today, but I'll just finish the, the little flower while we're chatting and um, ask, and if you have any more thoughts or questions, Laura, this will take me about 30 seconds to do. Great. Well, I know where I'm going this afternoon. Home Depot, here I come. Okay. <laughs> I Acryl will also- Pro. Acryl Pro. And Acryl it's like, Pro. And, and, and I'll, I'll, show, I'll show it again. It's a really, I mean, unfortunately, I'm not sure if they sell smaller amounts. This is one gallon, but it's only $15 for this. And and, and Michael's does have a lot of glass mosaics for people that actually want to try their hand. You can use the same technique. Just take a little dab, put it on the back of the tile, and just squish it down. Cool. And, um, and we'll also make a plug for local businesses. If you look on Etsy, there's a lot of great pieces you can find. I highly recommend searching because um, I found some cool pieces there. Uh, yeah, mosaics. I mean, I order a lot of my glass mosaics online from diff different stores, but you know, you can find them at local suppliers and, and in tile stores also. Mm -hmm. um, here's now, here's our little flower with a little more than we started with. <laughs> and you can just go from there. Magic. And a lot of times we will fill in these joints with a colored grout. Like for this one, if I wanted it to stand out as a flower, I might have a green grout um, on, the, on the rest of the panel mm. like, with other tile too. That, that, okay, so tell me this, if I'm making my trip to Home Depot already, which grout should I buy? <laughs> Buy sanded grout, buy a small, a small box, about a, I think it would be a five pound box of white sanded grout. It's called bright white poly blend sanded grout, not unsanded, definitely. And, right. um, and you apply the grout by turning it into, it's, it's a dry powder, you mix it with water and it becomes a paste that's kind of like sandy yogurt. And then you can put it on your panel and sponge it off right, right away. Put it on, get a, get a sponge that's, that's been, wrung out so you take your sponge and put it in water wring all the water out of it and then you can clean off all that grout and your it will fill in the cracks and leave you with a absolutely beautiful shiny tile mosaic awesome your, i'll be reporting back <laughs> you can tint it with paint too just regular acrylic paint 
you preempted the question that flew in as you said that, which is how do you uh, color the grout? So tint it with, with paint. Yeah, tint it with acrylic paint. You don't need awesome. to. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So it's hard to believe that 20 minutes has already flown by. This is so fascinating. And I love seeing your work. Will you Thanks. tell us one more thing before we go, which is you talked about having your architectural background and, and what you're doing now, but what was that transitional moment? How did you decide that mosaic was the thing? Was there, you know, a piece of uh, pottery or what? Well, um, what happened is I was invited by a school in Weston called the Meadowbrook School, private school that has a very strong arts programming. I and will just tell you, I used to teach, it, I used to be the um, ceramics counselor at the day camp there. So you know. So this, Fun fact. So, so you, I don't know if you knew the art teacher, Roseanne Beard or Margaret Honig. They're both very close friends of mine. And um, they invited me to um, do my first mosaic. Uh, they said, would you be interested in doing a 10 foot diameter tree of life in four seasons with our kids doing design and fabrication for our, out, our outdoor uh, entrance. And I said, sure, you know, and I had fallen in love with mosaics in, in um, Venice and Ravenna in Italy. And uh, that was my first chance. That was the year 2000. So that's, wow. so I've been doing them ever since. And 20 years since, that's amazing. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks for asking. Uh yeah, no, I love that. Um, all right, I know we have more questions. Somebody asked about, um, are you able to do work socially distanced? And it seems like in some ways in your studio you are. Tell us a little bit more about that before I close this up here. Well, of course, our social distancing is somewhat of a phased situation. Right now, the best way for me to work with people is for them to create drawings or have me give them the materials and have them create their own work. People, I could give people clay and have them make it themselves and give it back to me. Actually working on a the kind of projects that I do, it's hard to really maintain social distance in a way that would be long, you know, we could do it a couple of sessions, but I don't think we could do enough to, to have as much community participation as typical, but we could figure it out. We really could. We'd have workstations six feet apart with masks and, uh, and some, some hand sanitizer. And I think things would probably go just fine at, the, at where we're at right now. You have the greatest attitude. <laughs> I love it. Um, thank you so much, Josh. This was really fascinating. And I think we probably have a lot more to talk about in another segment. So um, everyone, before you go, I just need to remind you that um, tomorrow night, June 16th at 7 p.m., we'll have J Live Music with cantor Jody Blankstein, who has an absolutely gorgeous voice. On Friday, June 26th at 4 p.m., we are doing J Live Food with Chef Noah Clickstein of Peregrine, whose lamb stew at Beyond Bubby's Kitchen was absolutely unforgettable this year. Um, and on Monday, June 29th at 12 p.m., we have another mosaic artist, believe it or not, Cecilia Kremer. So come back so that we can compare techniques and talk. Um, so Josh, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, Laura. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely, happy to have you. And of course, last but not least, as the J Arts tagline says, let culture connect us. I hope that you felt a little bit connected today. And as you know, to make this work possible, we rely on generous community support from donors like you. So if you are enjoying what you're seeing with JLive, please consider making a donation to keep this going. I will put the donate button in the chat and uh, we look forward to seeing you at a future JLive. Have a great one. Bye everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Laura.